to stop <coughs> to the next talk. So the next talk is kind of a hands-on session compared to what with the previous talk. Uh, so live streaming with Nginx, LTMP, and Kaltua player and Kaltua package. So it's Jess. Hello all, and thank you for joining us in this sunny, lovely day. Um, I'm Jess, and I'll be showing you a practical hands-on guide as to how to achieve live streaming um, using all open source components. So we'll review the components consisting of this solution in a moment. And this is a really short, hands-on tutorial on how to achieve that. So without further ado, let's start. This is basically what I've just said. Um, so the components we'll be using are Nginx, the RTMP model for it, Kaltura's HTML5 player, which Zara also mentioned in his previous session, and our Kaltura server. And I'll show you exactly how to get that done. Licenses. So everything's open sourced. Nginx is BSD, the RTMP model as well. We're AGPL, FFmpeg is GPL, and that's pretty much what consists of our solution. The installation is quite easy. Uh, we provide both RPMs and DEBs, which run on RHEL, CentOS, Debian, and Ubuntu accordingly. And uh, we support various PHP versions as well, so starting from 5.3 and up to 7. All right? Now, the presentation includes link to installing the software as well. I've pre-installed it. It takes about 10 minutes, and the entire session is 25. So out of that consideration, the demo will be live, but the installation will not be demonstrated. It's quite easy, and we're happy to get support and questions uh, via the forum or email and various other options that I'll mention later on. So let's review some of the important packages that we have for this solution. As I said, we produce both DEBs and RPMs. The Kultura Nginx is mostly a vanilla Nginx that's compiled with a few extra models that we require. One of them is, of course, and the main component in our presentation is the RTMP model. Uh, that's also entirely open sourced, as I've said, uh, licensed under BSD. And then we also have the Kultura base component, which is which provides the server-side code, which is mostly PHP. That's also entirely open sourced, AGPL'd. We have the Kultura front, which consists of an Apache web server running our player, which is written in PHP mostly, PHP and JavaScript. And we have the FFmpeg that we also use for live streaming. Um, mostly people, when, when they think about RTMP, they often use FMLE. Uh, but that's closed sourced, and I personally don't like closed source solutions that much, so I'll show you how to live stream using FFmpeg only. Uh, seeing how we make vast use of FFmpeg in other components of our server, including to perform the transcoding operations, uh, we already have that included. So if you've installed Kultura Server, you also get FFmpeg command line utility that you can freely use and achieve that goal. So the RTMP configuration, the configuration paths vary somewhat depending on whether you've installed RPMs or DEBs, but the configuration itself is unified. So in our current environment, we'll be using Ubuntu. So that's a DEB package. Now, this keyboard is going to be somewhat challenging because it's both Mac and a French layout. <laughs> so we'll see how well I do. If I don't do that well, it's not because I'm stupid. I'm just no used to it. All right, so try to be understanding. Thus far, I've done well. I managed the slash and everything. I'm so proud of myself. Um, I don't think we can see too well, though, which is a bit of a concern to me. Can you see all right? All right, good, so it's just me. Um, the most important portion of our configuration, this is the Nginx config file, the main one, is here. So this is the HTTP server. This is uh, an integration with a different model that I wouldn't be showing today that I've actually demonstrated last year. That's our own Nginx VOD model. 
uh, I recommend you check the uh, session from last year because it might interest you as well, but I wouldn't uh, stick to that at the moment. Then we say that we'd like to listen on port 88. This is just a random choice. You could put it on any port. The reason why I'm not using 80 is because Apache consumes 80. Uh, we use that for the front end. So this could easily be... Sorry, why do you use Apache's front end and not Nginx as well? Um, because we have other applications for the server. I'll be showing them as well. They're not the focus of this session, but I'll show them. All right, so... We've chosen 88, you can choose anything else. Frankly, 88 is not that good of a choice because it's a well-known port for Kerberos. Uh, nobody uses it nowadays, but still I wouldn't recommend it. So choose something else like 8080, for example. And then we have the server name, we'll be using an IP because it's a demo machine. And then we go to the RTMP configuration portion. Now, a few words about Nginx. It's a very good server. Uh, can do a lot and has a lot of interesting models. Starting from version 1.9.11, uh, DSO support was introduced. DSO is dynamic shared object. So you could dynamically compile additional models onto Nginx and load it. Uh, prior to that, you had to statically compile all models into the Nginx. And that's the reason why we produce our own Kaltura Nginx package. Uh, if you're using uh, Nginx from higher versions, you could compile these models on, I mean, independently and load them during our runtime. So that's an important note. Uh, so for RTMP, the configuration, the, the very basic configuration is quite simple. We'll just say, listen on port 1935 TCP, which is the default RTMP mod, uh, port. All right, and we'll be using that to stream to the server. And then, as far as playback is concerned, we'll use HLS and port 88, which, again, could be changed. Now, as far as the application goes, we'll say, we'll call it Cave Live, for example, K for Cultura. Then we need to allow the live input. In our case, we'd like both dash segments and HLS segments and manifests. <coughs> so we've got both dash on and the dash path. That's where the manifest and the fragments would be stored. And we've got the HLS with a similar directive. Now, of course, on a production environment, you'd like to have more than one node for both redundancy and capacity. So bear in mind that in such a setup, the uh, HLS path and the uh, dash paths need to be accessible from both nodes. Uh, you could put it behind a very simple load balancer, even HA proxy, for example in which case you could also produce SSL offloading so that you could use RTMP over SSL as well for encryption if, if you're interested. Uh, many big vendors have this concern where they'd like everything to be encrypted. So that's a very cheap and easy way to produce that. In our setup, it's just one node, so it's irrelevant, but just saying so you'll know. All right, so that's our configuration. Now, let's go to our web interface for a moment, if you don't mind. Mm, this would be a very massive challenge to find the semicolon. Hold on, I can do it. I believe in myself. All right, perhaps I can't. Um, can you? <laughs> what do you want to do? Uh, this one, I want the column so that I... Oh, lovely. Perfect. Yes, very good. He's smarter than I am. That's very impressive. All right, now let's try to open a web browser. That's also very hard to do. Mac and I don't get along that well. Um, Finder. You want a browser, right? Yes, I don't even care which. Okay, Safari is okay? Yes, that's fine. Oh. So, so IP? Yes, yes, I do, but so you just, okay, like this. I don't use Macs, sorry. <laughs> All right, hold on. Yes, that would be hard to. There's a learning curve, I'm, I'm doing better. All right. So 
I'm going to take you now to our admin interface for the Cultura platform, where you can do tons of things, but I won't be demonstrating most of them today, seeing how we're very short on time. But we'll see some parts for our demo. So let me just log us in. Look at me go. Yes, I, I can hear the French people snickering. I can. That's all right. That's good. Humor is good. It makes for a more interesting presentation, doesn't it? All right. How do you enlarge this window? All right. Good. Oh, wow. Look at that. All right. Do you have from? Is, is Chrome installed here? No? Chrome. Or Firefox, maybe? That'd be nice, too. Should I enable this? OK. <laughs> Safari doesn't work, so we know that. Good. Oh, here we are. Good. Go. It's very insistent about Safari, isn't it? It's like, give it a try, give it a try, you want Safari, I know you do. Yes, oh, that's all right, I think I'm, I'm capable of that. You're faster though. Yeah. All right, let's do it again. What's with the A? Why can't it be where it, where it should be? It's a good thing I have a simple password for this one. All right. Oh. Okay, here we are. Good. So, let's manage our media. This is so fun, so much fun. There we go. <laughs> it's amusing, it's true. All right. Oh, look at it go. <coughs> First it said no, then it said yes. All right, good enough. So, um, We've set up Nginx and we've looked at the configuration. We have two tasks to finish now. One of them is to create a Kultura entry for integration between Kultura and the Nginx RTMP model. And the other is to stream. And then, uh, if we have time, maybe we'd like to actually play something. I don't know, it's not that important, I suppose, but you know, I think it might, it might add something. So, uh, let's create a new entry. seems that I can't can't navigate forward for some reason. See there are more tabs over there but they're not visible. Oh here we are, here we are. There we go. See that's a learning curve. All right so live stream entry. We'll give it a name. Let's do FOSDEM2. That's just um just a descriptive name, it doesn't really have any bearings over the process. And let's say manual live streaming, not Akamai. And here we just need to put in a URL for our Nginx playback. I've had the wisdom to do this so that I could copy paste. which may, be, may prove to be harder on Mac, but we'll try. <gasps> Look at that. That's amazing. All right, so what have we here? This is the IP for the Nginx server. As we said, uh, streaming would be done over RTMP, but playback would be done over HTTP using HLS. 
So we'll say this is the IP, our port is currently 88, uh, and this is the path which corresponds, if you look at the configuration here, um, There, there we go, there we go, look. All right. Okay. So this is the, uh, the HLS me, right? So segments, fragments, and, uh, and the manifest would be kept here. We'll see a sample of what it looks like. So this is part of the path, and this is the manifest for it, which our player would require in order to play back. That's it. That's all the parameters you should require. Then you do create live stream. And then you navigate back. Maybe it'll work this time. Here we are. And we'll see a new entry here. Maybe. No, I'm... I'm trying to navigate to the other columns, and apparently the technique I've found before doesn't work with this. Hold on. It's right, two fingers. Uh, yeah, it's like two fingers. Amazing. <laughs> All right, um, now I need to go to the other side. Let's, okay, here we are. Let's choose one of our new players. Good, and we're ready to stream. Now, seeing how we'll be using uh, FFmpeg from CLI, we're actually able to stream from the server itself onto itself, which is nice. So, let's do it. Should already have the command in my history. All right, that's fine. Never mind. So, um, this command is also in the presentation. Basically, it's, it's rather simple. ffmpeg minus re minus i, then the path to the video you'd like to stream, um, a few other uh, ffmpeg flags here, and then the rtmp URL for the nginx. Simple enough. Let's, let's run it. Look at it go. Now, if, I'm, if I'll only be able to open another tab, maybe we can look at the contents too. <coughs> so, that'd be a command T then. Oh, much easier. All right. Let's just say to the same place. Almost. Okay. So we should be seeing fragments now. Let's take a look. So var TMP HLS. Here we are. Look at those people. All right. Where is the asterisk? Okay, here we go. So we've got the manifest and we've got the fragments. If you're curious about what the manifest looks like, it's a very simple format. All right, so text file, fragments, and that's pretty much it. And now let's have a look at the player. I've also noticed that in my ffmpeg command, instead of saying fosdem1, I said fosdem. So instead of looking at this entry, let's look at this one. This one is fosdem. All right. <coughs> Well, 
This is Married with Children. It's a very nice sitcom from the 90s. Most of you weren't born. I hate to play hardball with you, but uh, mm -hmm. I spend every day wrestling with Beelzebub. I think I can take your best shot. Be careful. All right. And of course, you can open it full screen if you'd like. I love putting the screws to those jerks. Some humor is always good. And that's pretty much the way it works. So, if there are questions, I'd like to take them now. So that's a good question. You, you can, can, oh. So you need to repeat the I'm sorry. Uh, so the question was rather old fragments are removed from the server, or rather you can go back and forth. Is, is that correct? Yeah. So the answer is that's configurable uh, via the RTMP model directives. There are a lot of directives that I recommend you take a look at, and in the presentation you'll find a link to them. Uh, so you can decide whether or not you'd like to keep the old fragments so that you can go back and forth, or rather you like to discard them. Other questions? Uh, so what's the main advantage of using uh, your module instead of the, there is other like RTMP uh, module for NGINX? Uh, right, so first of all, this is not my model. Uh, the presentation actually makes that quite clear. Uh, this is an open source model by someone else, uh, a very nice person who has an open source project. Kultura, the Kultura portion is what is the company I work for, and I do the integrations and the packaging of DEBs and RPMs and so forth. The model itself is not mine. Um, let's, if we look at the presentation for a moment, I'm just skipping forward. All right, so these are the people. So the guy that maintains and, and started this project, the RTMP model, is Roman. Um, and if you look at the appendix, you'll find links to everything, uh, both uh, stuff that I'm responsible for, other cultural resources, his project, of course, and GenX, and, and so forth. Uh, but back to your question as to the advantages. So there are a few other alternatives. Uh, we also have setups with Wowza, for example. And whilst Wowza is a well-known player in the industry, and I can't say their products don't work, they're not open. Uh, so if you need a very fast configuration RTMP solution that's open, I would certainly recommend this one. For us, it was a no-brainer because we also have other integrations and models that use the NGINX. In, and so because of the VOD model, for example, which is something that we do maintain in-house and a project that we did start in-house, uh, we already had NGINX in all our deployments. So for us, it was a no-brainer to make that choice. Uh, there are other solutions, and some of them are also open. Uh, with RTMP, if, if you want to use WebRTC, for example, there are, a lot, there are many others, and we've actually seen a quite a few nice sessions about them. Uh, one was MediaSoup, and I've seen a few others. So it's, there are definitely other open alternatives, but I've found by researching that if you want RTMP, this is probably the best shot, at least it was for us. I mean, every project has different considerations, naturally. But for us, this was a very good choice. And, uh, do you recommend any kind of uh, ultra low latency uh, communication? Um, well, you know, latency is always a problem, right? I mean, everyone hears latency, there is pop-up like this, because it's a very common problem. Um, that depends on how you define very low latency. How would you define that? Yeah, like less than a second. <sighs> With our team, kind of less than a second. Of, I frankly haven't seen anyone who's managed to get there. Uh, I'll be happy to see it, though. I mean, it sounds very nice. <laughs> so, but I haven't seen it yet. OK, thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Five minutes.